Hey y'all, it's Wendy Johnson with Drive Across Texas and we are here at Evergreen Cemetery in Paris, Texas, Lamar County. And I'm here with my new friend. <laughs> I just love him because he is the caretaker here at Evergreen, Mr. Jim Blassingame. And he's gonna Thank tell you. us a little bit about the history here. Well, in, uh, prior to 1866, uh, the city cemetery, which is located on Graham Street here in Paris, Texas, was getting too large and they didn't have room to expand. So a group of businessmen formed an association and started buying property and then went to the legislature and was chartered September the 26th, 1866. Okay. And we become a cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the folks that were buried at the, the old city cemetery, which we're not, we're not affiliated with the city at all, or the okay. county, uh, we're, private association. So a private yeah. association. Yeah. Okay, okay. And uh, so what they did, they, they established that association and, and uh, the, we got our charter with the legislature and started burying. But uh, this, a lot of the folks that were buried in the old city cemetery were disinterred and moved out here. Oh, wow. So some of the dates on monuments out here you may see prior to 1866. Okay. But the records, you know, back in the 1800s weren't all that good. So yeah. they uh, uh, didn't have a record. So you just have to assume that they were disinterred from the old city cemetery mm. and brought out here because this was growing. Mm. And then, of course, that was in 1866. We're a little over 150 years old now. And mm -hmm. We have a population of about a 40,000, right at 40,000. And it's one of the largest cemeteries of its type in Texas. And what I mean by the type, I mean with upright monuments. Yes. Instead of the park type, flat, everybody's mm -hmm. monuments the same. Ours are very unique. We have some, a lot of uh, unique monuments, such as uh, Jesus with cowboy boots, which is probably the most famous. Mm -hmm. We have uh, white buffalo. We have trees, carved out trees. And in the older section of the cemetery, if you've noticed, they, uh, the monuments, a lot of the monuments were done with a mallet and a chisel. Oh, so wow. there is an awful lot of artwork here also. That's rather very than just unique. a place for, you know, to bury your loved ones. Mr. Jim here, it's one of the reasons I'm just gonna call him my best friend now. Yeah. He, he made, I love this y'all, I love cemeteries, I love the history, but he made, it's almost like a walking tour or a scavenger hunt and you can go around and he has taken the time to put together descriptions and a map to help you find them of some of the more notable graves and important people and the buffaloes on there. Yes. Jesus and Boots is on there, some of the historical markers. There's, there's a lot of work. You said this took you five years? Five years, yeah. And it's growing. It's, it's growing because yeah, it's still it's going a, It's on. a work in progress. I, I get a little bit, uh, do a little bit of research you know, every once in a while mm -hmm. when I get time and uh, I'll add to it. That's pretty so. cool. And you brought out, tell us about your book that you brought out. Well, this book was written by uh, Elizabeth and Tony Booth who are historians, local historians here in town. And, and of course I helped them write it and it's on, on Evergreen Cemetery and it has a lot of history of the people that are buried here. Oh, wow. So I got some of my research from here, mm -hmm. but it, it gives uh, a lot of descriptions of what they did and what they accomplished. And oh, wow. of course, you know, everybody in a cemetery has some sort of history. They have a story. They have a story. That's and right. some of it is good, some of it is bad. We've got some outlaws buried out here and we've got some awful nice people, senators and, and mm -hmm. uh, quite a few congressmen are buried here even. Yeah. And uh, so it's, uh, cemetery is a very interesting place if you like history. Yeah, now you have an interesting story because your great granddaddy worked here. He came here in 1900. That's a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> and then your dad. Then he hired was here. my dad. My great grandfather came to work as a teamster. Uh -huh. uh, I don't mean the, the union type. I meant mules, and yeah. uh, that's how they kept the cemetery with the mules. So he was a wow. uh, teamster, and then he hired my dad off of the farm, and my dad came here, and we moved into the house when I was seven years old. 
And so I've been in the cemetery since I was seven, but I've actually been on the payroll since I was uh, 50 years. Yeah, 50 years, okay. So you're third generation, but then you've had kids and grandkids that have also helped out here. So there's actually like kind of five generations here at Evergreen Cemetery. Uh -huh. That's kind of neat. Yeah, my two sons have worked here and, and my great, my grandson has worked here. So, yeah. but of course they, went on after school. They worked, you know, during summers and things. Yeah. And, and, uh, just to have something to keep them off the street. Yeah, keep them busy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot to do to keep them busy here. Always well, they, something they, to do. Well, you know, this, is, this has been their life, you know. they yeah. we, we all grew up here in the cemetery, and uh, it's, it's been their li whole life uh, yeah. growing up. I've hunted rabbits and everything else out here and played <laughs> cowboys and Indians all over the cemetery. Oh, I bet. I love that. <laughs> I can only imagine. What this cemetery is, it's just a big country cemetery. Yeah. That's all it is. Okay. And yes, we will have a website uh, probably fairly soon. Yeah. But uh, now what they, they have to do is, is uh, they can call me mm -hmm. and uh, at Evergreen Cemetery in Paris, Texas. And I will look their party up. It, it, I do have it on computer. Yeah, so you can tell people if they have a loved one buried here, yes. if they're looking for somebody. Yes. And tell them know, the location. And, and tell them and, where they uh, are. If they come to the office, they can get a map and, uh, and a brochure. That's right, they can do the walking tour. They can do the walking scavenger tour. Scavenger hunt. And if there's a group, we'll do a tour. There you go, and do a tour. You guys got we, it going on. We, uh, we even have a a bus tour that comes through here that uh, oh wow that's interesting it's uh i forgot what they call that kind of bus it's uh it's the old trolley that's what it is it's a trolley bus oh and uh, they have a speaker on it okay and, yeah, and, uh, yeah for the people that's that can't walk and do the walking tour they yeah. we they drive through and, and either i will or one of the girls at the chamber of commerce gives the the tour there's yeah, so it, many interesting people. A lot and, of people there, and, and uh, one in, interesting one is the D.H. Moore. Mm -hmm. did, did you see it? We did. We saw his. He's yeah. a very interesting. Okay, well, headstone. He was a knight mm -hmm. in the order of. And I may not be pronouncing. I just see. I was going to let you wrong. pronounce yeah. it because I wasn't sure. I say Fates. Uh huh. I think there's about three. 3,000 members now still in the United States. Oh, wow. And then there's another gentleman in there that his name was Keel. Mm -hmm. And he was a, a I knight. saw there was a couple of them that were part of that organization. Yeah. yeah. I was going to let you say it, though, because I was looking at it going, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce that right. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm not, I'm probably just tearing it all to pieces, but it's, it, that's what I say. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, his monument is, uh, is hand carved. Oh you wow, know, I didn't know that. Yeah, and the detail on it is just unbelievable. It is amazing. Because it's a tree and it's made into a cross. Mm -hmm. On the top of the thing, it's got a dove, and then right under the dove is a skull and crossbones. Mm -hmm. Then it goes on down to, from your loving wife, Marvin. I saw which that. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I know, I was like. Because back in the 1800s, women weren't named with a masculine name. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Bobby Joe or Bobby <laughs> Jean or yeah. Lula May or something, you know. I it, know. Was, it wasn't Marvin, <laughs> yeah. but he owned the White Elephant Saloon mm -hmm. and he was killed in a gunfight in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the area of the fountain where the fountain is now. But yeah. at that particular time, it was a wagon yard. That's where you, when you came to town, that's where you parked your wagon. So was there all the buildings and it was just a wagon yard in the middle or was it just- Yeah, it was saloons and, and uh, dry goods and grocery stores uh -huh. and things like that. And just the middle was a wagon yard? The middle was a wagon yard. It was kind of a square. Yeah. Built in a square. That's cool, that's cool. We read that about him. And then Mr. Coverson, who is, has the Coverson mausoleum up there, mm -hmm. he's uh, kind enough to donate and have that fountain built. Yes, and the library. And the library. Yeah. And there's a park. Oh, wow, okay. Over in uh, the east part of town. So tell me, what is your favorite monument? What the, which one do you like the most? Well, the most inter interesting one to me is D.H. Moore. Uh, the craftsmanship or the art, the 
it's just kind of all in the mystery, you know. It is. And, it's, uh, it's different. It's definitely but awesome there's, intrigue. There, there's so many, I couldn't just name one. Uh, the Coverson Mausoleum is, is uh, one of the more elaborate monuments that we have in the cemetery. Besides, this one that's behind us is fairly new. Uh, yes, that one's beautiful. Yeah, it's the Abbot. And uh, it's it's real nice. Yeah, with the Lord's Supper, mm -hmm. that is amazing. Yep, that scares me. It scares you? Yeah, it scares me because I'm afraid someone's going to break one of the figures. Oh, off. I get <laughs> Yeah, I get. I know. We, I thought we that do too. have vandalism occasionally. Yeah. But it's it's really at a minimum of the size of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, it's always sad whenever that happens. But I thought that too. I was like. Oh, I hope nobody ever tears that up because it's just so beautiful. It, it's yeah. a beautiful sculpture. It, it, it is. all is. There's, there's just a, tons and tons of history in this cemetery. Yeah. Of course, that's true in any cemetery. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. as old as we are. Yeah. Okay, so I have to ask, is there anything just leery, spooky, creepy that you can share with us? I can't share it with you. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you there privately, <laughs> but I can't. There's, yeah. there's, there's some uh, there's some rumors, there's some stories that we've heard, and there is just sometimes you're just like, mm, there's something over there. Well, you it's, know, there's a lot of family lore, and uh -huh. then, then there's facts. Yeah. And sometimes partial of it is true. Yeah. Some of it, and some of it is just blown out of blown proportion. Blown out of proportion, that's right. <laughs> Sometimes and, that and happens. And we have, we have that. I'm doing some research now on a, a gentleman that was that rode with the James Gang. Oh, wow. And he also rode with Quantrell's Raiders, later went to the James Gang, mm -hmm. and then later went to another gorilla outfit. And then finally he retired, I guess, <laughs> and, and moved back home in, in uh, the... Uh, southeastern part of Lamar County okay. and occasionally his buddies, gang members that he rode with would come through and, and hide out at his place. So. Oh, interesting. And I'm doing research on him now. So. Is he buried here? He's buried here. Interesting. And his wife is buried oh, here. Oh, wow, wow. And I, I had, uh, uh, I really got interested in when a member of his uh, family came and, and looked him up and they were writing a book nice. about his life, yeah. and he was quite a character. I bet there's some stories in there. <laughs> well, I, they gave me a photograph. I have it in the office of, uh, I think there's five or six or seven of the outlaws that was visiting his house. Somebody took a picture, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the gang members was uh, that didn't want to be in the picture was standing in the doorway of the little house, and uh, his name was Jesse James. Mm. So, <laughs> who knows? It's it's family lore, or it's you just never know. Yeah, or it's really, really history. We've heard some we've heard some stories and and done a little, you know, that Jesse James thing. You know, some people say he's over in Granbury. Some yeah. people, you just never know. No. I mean, how how do we know those things? But we it's don't. interesting, and it definitely gets you. Whenever I see things like that, it makes me go look them up and Absolutely. research them and, and learn a little more. So even if it's a little tall Texas tale or something, it's still, it's interesting to hear about. It, it is. is. It is. It is. I'm telling you, thank you so much for talking to us well, today. Well, thank you all sharing. for coming. And, and I'm always excited to talk about the cemetery. I, oh, I don't blame you. I love it. Uh, that's the reason I didn't, I, you know, I was supposed to retire about 15 years ago, but. What would you do you then? Know, <laughs> well, I, I teach some at it to junior college. Oh, and, nice. Uh, what do you teach? Fishing. Really? Yes. Cool. Yes. Fishing yeah. edition right here. Is that right? Yeah, Brian wants to do a drive across Texas fishing edition. Oh, really? And I told him, I said, babe, I, I don't, I don't. I like to fish, but I'm not real good at it. And I don't, I can bait a hook, but I really don't, you know, I fished so. uh, Bassmaster Professional Circuit for about five years. Oh, Cutter would and it love just got, <laughs> It just got to be hard, hard work. <laughs> That's cool. Well, how, see, we learned something else. My oldest one loves to fish. 
so he's he's all into it and I like it I'm just not super good at it so he was like I don't think you should host that one and I was like probably not oh well sure <laughs> so see yeah. we'll just come pick up Miss Jim take him fishing yes <laughs> learn a little more history <laughs> I and, love it and I'm an outdoor writer for the Parish News oh nice I've that's been doing cool. that for about 30 years 30, 35 years. Well, you so. just have all kinds of trades. I got all do. kinds. Of, I do all kinds. I got my finger and everything. I love it. I love it. It keeps me well, busy. Well, you know, some, if not, you'd probably get in trouble. I would. Running around with Jesse James and I stuff. I would, yeah. Be telling tall tales. <laughs> there <not>? you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Y'all, you know, next time that you're rolling across Paris, Texas, stop in. Check out Mr. Jim. Go find him at the office or somewhere around the cemetery. He's got so much to share, y'all. And it's definitely worth your drive across Texas. Bye, y'all.